Pluto is unlike any other planet in the solar system. It's located at the very edge of the solar system that we inhabit. Before this discovery, there had never been a person from the United States to locate a celestial body. Even though scientists have already been researching Pluto for over 30 years, there are still many things about the planet that they do not know. It has been difficult to learn more about Pluto due to the fact that it's located so distant from Earth and we are unable to send spaceships there. However, because of the marvels of science and astronomy, we are able to discover, figure out, and speculate on a great deal of information regarding this strange world. Here in this video, we'll be talking about the new discovery on planet by the James Webb Space Telescope. Subscribe to this channel if you're ready to take a deep dive into the vast unknown with me as we explore the most insane images from outer space. Let's get started. When Pluto was first discovered, it was believed to be the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun. Scientists have since determined that it's the largest dwarf planet that can be found in our solar system. The Kuiper Belt is a region that is beyond the orbit of Neptune and is home to hundreds of millions of icy, rocky planets that are greater than 100 kilometers in diameter. It's estimated that there are at least a billion asteroids in this region. In 2006, Pluto was demoted from its previous classification as a planet to that of a dwarf planet a schism that emerged as the result of this reclassification between the scientific community and the general population. After observing some peculiar shifts in the orbits of Neptune and Uranus in 1905, the American astronomer Percival Lowell came to the conclusion that Pluto must have been created. Lowell reasoned that the orbits of the ice giants must be off because of the gravity of another object in the universe. When Lowell predicted the location of the unknown planet in 1915, he was correct, but by the time it was discovered 15 years later, Lowell had already passed away. Nevertheless, Lowell and other astronomers made predictions that led to the Clyde Tombaugh's discovery of Pluto at the Lowell Observatory in 1930. Venetia Burney, who grew up in Oxford, England, suggested to her uncle that when she was 11 year old, that Pluto ought to be named after Roman God. In the end, her grandfather was the one who decided that the observatory would be called. The astronomer Percival Lowell is honored by having his name honored by the beginning letters of the planet's name, which are P and L. Due to the peculiar nature of Pluto's orbit, the distance that it can travel from the Sun can be 49 times greater than that of Earth. Because Pluto's orbit is highly eccentric and not circular, the distance that separates it from the Sun is subject to significant variation. Pluto's cycle around the Sun takes 240 Earth years, and during 20 of those orbits, dwarf planet is closer to the Sun than Neptune is. Astronomers have a now once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to investigate this distant, icy globe that is much smaller than Earth. Pluto overtook Neptune and its orbital distance to the Sun in the year 1999. Twenty years ago, Pluto was considered the ninth planet in our solar system. Because Pluto is moving ever closer to the Sun, the ice that covers its surface will eventually melt, revealing an atmosphere that is predominantly composed of nitrogen and has just trace amounts of methane. It is believed that Pluto's atmosphere will eventually freeze and evaporate as the planet moves further away from the Sun. If, however, Pluto ever develops an atmosphere, it will be able to withstand extremely high wind speeds. Alterations in the luminosity of the atmosphere may be caused by gravitational waves or by the passage of wind through mountainous ranges. Although it is highly unlikely that liquids are currently moving across the surface of Pluto, it is likely that they did so in the past. Images captured by the New Horizons inside the Tombaugh Regio appear to reveal an abandoned canal network that surrounds a frozen lake. There is a possibility that the atmosphere of this planet used to be approximately 40 times denser than that of Mars. In 2016, scientists announced that they have found clouds in Pluto's atmosphere by using data from the New Horizons spacecraft. Seven incredible items have been discovered close to the Terminator, which is an area where clouds frequently congregate. It's not difficult to distinguish between these geological features, despite the fact that they are around the same size and have low altitudes. If those are clouds, then the particles in them are most likely composed of acetylene, ethane, and hydrogen cyanide. For a period of 67 years, scientists believed that Pluto was the ninth planet that orbit the Sun. It didn't care that it was the smallest planet in our solar system, or that its moon was just half the size of the planet. It was just another day in its life. It made no difference that its orbit was four more oval than spherical because nothing changed. To say that Pluto was a peculiar world would be an oversimplification of the situation. Deva Sobel, a science writer, wrote about planets in her book titled The Planets, which was published in the year 2005. According to what she said, children comprehend how small they are. Due to the fact that it is all unknown, adults will have the ability to relate to it. Many individuals felt compelled to defend Pluto. 
Therefore, it probably shouldn't have been much of a surprise that people were angry 15 years ago when Pluto was demoted from planet to dwarf planet status. The International Astronomical Union recently revised the criteria for when anything can be referred to as a planet. Catherine Cesarski is confident that the decision they made will be the best one. She held the position of president of the IAU in 2006. At the moment, she is working as an astronomer with the CEA Scholar, which is located in France. She claims that Pluto is, in fact, extremely different from the other planets in the solar system in a number of different significant ways. Even more, in the years preceding the reclassification of Pluto, astronomers have uncovered a great deal of extrasolar objects that are comparable to Pluto. It wouldn't have been possible to remove Pluto from the list of planets if few additional planets hadn't been added first. As a result, getting rid of Pluto was not a challenging. Cesarki claimed that the placement of Pluto below the list of planets was never done on design. It was to everyone's satisfaction that it was decided to include Pluto in the newly discovered category of dwarf planets. There are those who examine the same planets and stars who are of the same opinion. One of them was Jean-Luc Margot, who received his education at the University of California, Los Angeles. It was hailed as a victory of science over emotion when the choice to refer to it as a dwarf planet was made. He said that in order to follow the scientific approach, one must be willing to consider the possibility that one's previously held beliefs were incorrect and put Pluto in its rightful position. On this point, there are consensus among no one. Jim Bell believes that it's unfair to require planets to clean up waste that is accumulated in the space around them. Planetary research is the focus of his lab at the Arizona State University in Tempe, which is located in the United States. According to Bell, the appearance of the trash is more important factor to consider when deciding whether or not to throw it out. Therefore, we cannot conclude from this that the Pluto does not exist. According to him, the definition of a planet should be expanded to include any location that possesses fascinating geology. You may utilize the proverb that what you are is more important than where you are to explain this situation. The geology of Pluto, without a shadow of a question, is one of the most intriguing features of this world. Since 2006, scientists have determined that Pluto possesses an atmosphere, and it's quite likely that the surface of the planet also features clouds. It has mountain ranges composed of frozen nitrogen fields, methane mountains, and mountains composed of water ice. In addition, there are dunes and volcanoes in the area. The geology of this planet, along with the geology of other rocky planets in the interplanetary system, is both fascinating and consistently evolving. As a direct consequence of this, Philip Mensker arrived at the conclusion that Pluto is, in fact, a planet. Mensker stated that this was an immediate reaction to the dumb IAU definition. He is a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, where he works. However, the scientific method relies on data collected from the real world. Mensker and his co-workers are convinced that the definition of planet provided by the IAU is inaccurate, and as a result, they have begun collecting data to demonstrate their point. Even while it will be capable of carrying out studies on the solar system, the James Webb Space Telescope's primary objective is not to do so. Even though it will be able to make a surface details on Pluto, it will be unable to do significantly better than Hubble did in this regard. Therefore, photos obtained by the James Webb Space Telescope should have the same level of detail. It is possible that James Webb will occasionally glance at Pluto in order to determine whether or not the seasonal changes that Hubble observed in the 1900s and 2000s are still present. However, they will not be able to the same quality of those that were obtained by the New Horizons mission one year ago. The Kuiper Belt, which contains Pluto now that it's a dwarf planet, will be at the center of the attention now that Pluto is no longer considered to be a planet. One of the first things that the James Webb Space Telescope will accomplish this year is to look at Pluto and some of the other thousands of objects that are located in the Kuiper Belt. These items, which are referred to as Kuiper Belt objects, or trans-Neptunian objects, come in a broad variety of hues, forms, and sizes. They can also be grouped in a variety of configurations, and they exhibit geological and atmospheric activity. Even though numerous spacecraft, like the New Horizons mission carried out by NASA, have flown by these bodies, scientists have only had a fleeting opportunity to see them. With Webb's very sensitive infrared cameras, researchers will be able to observe the objects for a far longer period of time. The data will also be examined by scientists in order to get further insight into the formation of the solar system. These asteroids have been described as being in the graveyard of planetary system evolution by Jonathan Lumine, an astronomer at Cornell University and a Webb transdisciplinary scientist. However, he stated that the objects have been around for billions of years and may continue to exist further into the future. 
Webb will also investigate centaurs, which are objects that were once located in the Kuiper Belt but have since altered their orbits to bring them closer to the Sun and place them in orbit between Jupiter and Neptune. One of these things is called Triton, and it's the moon of the planet Neptune. There is evidence that this item is from the Kuiper Belt that was pushed into orbit around Neptune when it got too close to Neptune by accident. Despite the fact that this is technically Neptune's moon, there is evidence that it is an item from the Kuiper Belt. The James Webb Space Telescope would be close to its full operational capability by the time it was launched in December 2021. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section. Also at last, give a like to this video. See you soon.